Hello everyone, you are welcome to this lesson. In this video, we are going to solve this question I have on the screen. The question says, the cable states AB and AD help support pole AC. Knowing that the tension is 120 pounds in AB and 40 pounds in AD, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the forces exerted by the states at A using trigonometry. So let's look at how I'm going to solve this question. So let's take this to be our point A, okay? And then the, the rectangle in the green color represents the pole, okay? Let's take note of that. So I'm going to draw the force vectors, okay? Let's look at that also. So let this be the 120 pounds force okay and then let this be the 40 pounds force okay let me name this this is the 120 pounds and then this is the 40 pounds force okay and then this is my x axis and then this is my y axis okay so the next thing i'll do is that i'm going to draw okay another force vector that will be parallel to Okay, I'm going to draw another force vector that will be parallel to the 120 pounds force. Okay, and then I will draw another to be parallel to the 40 pounds force. Okay, let's take note of that. So this also becomes 120 pounds. This also becomes 40 pounds. Okay, all right. So what I'll do is that I will draw this force vector here from the tails of the two force forces to the point where their heads meet okay the magnitude of this line here becomes the magnitude of the resultant force so this becomes our resultant force r okay which is the value that you want to find okay but before we find r we have to find a value for some angles okay so let's look at that first so let's take this to be our angle A. Okay, let's take this to be our angle B. And let's take this to be angle E. Okay. All right, so first of all, what I'll do is that I will find the value of what? Angle A. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that. So to find A, we're going to take the tan of angle A. That will be called to the opposite side, which is the 8 feet here, divided by the adjacent side, which is what the 10 feet here. So divided by 10 so angle a will be equal to the tan inverse of 8 over 10 okay so let's see what you are going to get for that so the tan inverse of 8 on 10 okay will give us a value of 38.66 degrees okay that's the value of what a so let's look at what i'm going to do next okay so i'm just going to draw another horizontal line here to represent the x axis okay and then i'll draw another vertical line here to represent the y axis okay so let's look at what i'm going to do so we know the value of angle a now right so you have to find the value of what angle b but you see that this angle here will be this much what angle b because they are what z angles right so this angle here is also going to be this mass what angle B, and then here will also be this mass what angle A. So now that we know the value of A, we can easily find B, right? Because the sum of these two angles must be equal to what? 90 degrees, right? So you're going to have A plus B, okay, to be equal to what? 90 degrees. We know the value of A already, so B will be equal to 90 degrees minus what? A, which is what? 38.66 degrees. So at the end, b will be equal to we have 90 minus 38.66 that gives us a value of what 51.34 51.34 degrees so that's the value of what angle b okay so what i'm going to do next is that i'm just going to repeat that same vertical line that i drew okay this is the vertical line here okay let that be the vertical line okay and then let this be the horizontal line that I drew on the on the figure here, which is what this horizontal line here. Let it be this line here. Okay. So you are going to see that 
this angle here will be our angle b right that's going to be our angle b okay let's okay so from this point here okay you can directly see that this is going to be our angle a okay that's going to be our angle a okay so let's look at what you are going to do next okay so now you have to find angle e because you haven't found that angle yet okay so let's look at that so so for now so we're going to have tan e okay to be equal to the opposite side which is six over the adjacent side then so angle e will be equal to the tan inverse okay of six on ten okay so let's see what you are going to get for that so tan inverse of six on ten okay that will give us a value of thirty point nine six degrees so that's the value of what angle e okay so this should be our angle e okay because of the limited space that we have there let me just write e there so now you find the value of what angle a b and then e okay that will make the calculation very easy for us so now all you want to do is to find the value for this angle here okay which our name as angle f okay you want to find the value of what angle f which is which is the angle that will be opposite to the resultant force if you're able to find the value for this angle finding the resultant force will be very easy for us so you see that the sum of the angle a f and e should be equal to 180 right so you are going to have a plus f plus e a to be equal to 180 right so angle f will be equal to 180 okay minus a plus what e right so let's find a value of what angle f so that's going to be equal to 180 minus you know the value of a to be 38 Point six six, and then the value of e to be thirty point nine six. Okay, so let's find the value of angle f. Okay, let's look at that. So you're going to have one hundred and eighty minus thirty eight point six six plus thirty point nine six. That gives us a value of one hundred and ten point thirty eight degrees. Okay, so that'll be the value of what angle f. So now, since you know the angle opposite to the resultant force, and then we also know the value of our two sides, we can go ahead and then use the cosine rule to find the value of what the resultant force. So let's go ahead and then look at that. So we are going to have r squared to be equal to 120 squared plus 40 squared minus 2 multiplying 120 times 40. Okay cosine of let me clean this okay multiplying the cosine of 110.38 degrees so let's simplify this and see what you're going to get for the resultant force let's add 120 squared to 40 squared okay let's look at what you're going to get you're going to have 16,000. okay minus okay then let's multiply 2 by 120 times 40 okay i'm multiplying quotient of 110.38 that gives us a value of minus 3343.15 so at the end you just have to add these two values okay because of the negative signs you have two negative signs that so you're going to have plus so you have 16000 plus 334 3.15 so that gives us a value of 19343.15 so i will just be the square root of this value 19343.15 so let's see what you're going to get for r so our r which is the resultant force will be equal to 139.08 pounds okay so that'll be the value for the resultant force okay so now all you have to do is to find the direction or the angle that the resultant force makes it what the x axis okay so let's look at that so what you're going to do is that you're going to find the angle it will make with the negative x axis okay this is because in this case finding the angle it makes with the 
negative x axis will be much more easy okay and then what you have to know is that as soon as you're able to find the angle it makes with the negative x axis in this case you'll be able to find the angle it makes with the positive x axis also okay the question wasn't specific okay so we can find the angle that it makes with the negative or find the angle that it makes with, with what the positive x axis okay you can find any of them because the question wasn't specific okay but you have to know that so far as you find one finding the other will be very easy to do so let's look at that so all you have to do is to find the value for this angle here okay that's what you want to do now okay so let's name this small angle here as angle g okay because before you can find the total angle you must know the value for this small angle here also which is the angle g in there so let's look at how you're going to find that angle that angle is the angle opposite to the 40 pounds force so to find that angle we can use the sine rule okay and then we are going to have the sine of angle g over the 40 pounds force okay and then that will be equal to let's use the resultant force so we know the angle opposite to the resultant force to be 110.38 so sine of 110.38 divided by the value of the resultant force which is what 139.08 pounds okay so now you can find the value for the angle g so we are going to have sine g to be equal to the sine of 110.38 divided by 139.08 times 40 okay this will give us sine j to be equal to 0.27 okay so let's go ahead so let's find the value of j so j will be equal to the sine inverse of 0.27 okay so let's see what you are going to get for that so sine inverse of 0.27 that gives a value of 15.66 degrees okay so now that you know the value of that small angle g we can add it to angle b to find the angle that the resultant force makes with what the negative x as is okay so let's name that angle as phi okay so phi will be equal to angle b plus angle g okay and then we know angle B to be 51 point that's 51.34 okay plus 15.66 so let's see what you are going to get for the angles you have 51.34 plus 15.66 that gives us a value of 67 degrees okay so that'll be the angle that the resultant force will be making with the what the negative x axis if you want to find the angle that it will be making with the positive x axis that's just going to be 180 degrees minus okay, the 67 degrees that we found so let's see what you're going to get 180 minus the 67 will give us a value of 113 degrees okay so if you have to find the angle if the question was specific or if the question given to you is specific that you, you should find the angle it makes with the negative x axis then you are going to use this answer if it says the angle it makes with the positive x axis then you are going to use this answer here okay you are going to use this answer here thank you very much for watching this video